Chevy's cruise proved that GM could build a decent small car, one that erased years of bad memories of lousy Cobots and Cavaliers. This 2016 redesign aims to make the cruise more competitive in a compact car segment that is trying to feel all grown up. Just to make things confusing, the old cruise remains on sale for a while, dubbed Cruise Limited. The second generation cruise has lost its body fat. It weighs 225 pounds less than the equivalent last generation cruise we tested. Styling is less pudgy than before too, with a more streamlined look that's very similar to the concurrent Honda Civic and Hyundai Elantra. There are sacrifices for that styling though. The rear window base is really, really high. At least a rear camera is standard. Blind spot monitoring is optional. Don't think that the cruise shrunk to lose weight. It's actually three inches longer. Much of that length went into the back seat, which now fits adults with reasonable comfort. That's a big improvement over the cramped seats in previous cruises, and it puts it on par with the roomiest cars in the segment. Another stretch goal for the cruise is improved fuel economy. The last generation cruise could only manage 26 miles per gallon overall with its gasoline engine in our tests. The new car's reduced weight should help, as well as a new 1.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder that makes 153 horsepower. Most will have a six speed automatic, but you can still get a manual. Cars with the automatic get a standard start stop system that shuts off the engine when stopped at traffic lights to save fuel. Power is certainly adequate and the engine is reasonably refined. Even though Volkswagen's diesel emission scandals put a cloud over the sale of diesels here in the States, Chevy plans to sell a diesel cruise here once again. That's something of a surprise because the last generation diesel cruise really didn't sell that well. Just as diesels appeal to European loving car buyers here, so do hatchbacks. And Chevy plans to sell a hatchback version of the cruise here too. There are certainly other car companies that sell globally inspired and globally sold compact cars here in America like the Ford Focus and the Volkswagen Golf. Those cars are more fun to drive than the Cruze. They have sharper steering and more nimble reflexes. Not that the Cruze is bad to drive. It rides well, calming down bumpy roads, and road noise is pretty well kept in check. This mid-level LT includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and a convenience package that brings a power driver's seat and heated seats. Its sticker price comes to $23,145. That's about one to two thousand dollars more than a Hyundai Elantra or Honda Civic after adjusting for equipment differences. Then again, we got a pretty good deal on this car and it was the first one to arrive at the dealership. That suggests that you can probably haggle down the price. Maybe the premium price hints at Chevy's ambitions for this car. Like the redesigned Malibu that they viewed at the same time, the Cruze's newfound style aims to make the car feel more desirable while also addressing the car's previous weaknesses. For more on compact sedans, Check out consumerreports.org.